we're going to be talking about exchange rates and the determinants of exchange rates. For our example, we're going to be talking about two countries, or more specifically, two different currencies. We'll be talking about the market for euros in Switzerland, and later on we'll be talking about the market for Swiss francs in Europe. Before we can get into our analysis of how exchange rates are determined, we first have to clarify a few things about an exchange rate diagram. So let's look at the market for euros in Switzerland here that we see on the left. In Switzerland, there is a demand for euros. The demand for euros comes from Swiss households who wish to buy European goods and services and other assets, including European government bonds and savings in European banks. So the red demand curve, D for euros or D euros, represents Swiss households who are demanding European goods, services, and assets. Or the supply of euros comes from European individuals who are buying Swiss goods, services, and assets, which leads to an inflow of euros into Switzerland. The only reason there are euros available to Swiss individuals is because European individuals are buying Swiss goods, services, and assets. Therefore, the supply of euros in Switzerland comes from Europeans who are buying things made in Switzerland or assets within Switzerland. The demand for euros comes from Swiss households, but the supply of euros comes from European households who are supplying their currency to the foreign exchange market in Switzerland in order to buy Swiss goods. Next, let's, let's look at some of the labels on our foreign exchange diagram for euros in Switzerland. The price of a currency is known as the exchange rate, or in this case, the price of euros is always expre expressed in terms of the number of Swiss francs per euro. Therefore, on our vertical axis, we put CHF, which is the abbreviation for Swiss francs, over euros. In this case, we see that one euro costs one franc and 20 cents to a Swiss household who wishes to buy a, a good service or asset from a European country. Therefore, the exchange rate of francs per euro is 1.2. As we can see in the current market for euros in Switzerland, there is an exchange rate of 1.2 francs per euro. What could cause this exchange rate to change? Well, just like any price, a change in an exchange rate occurs whenever there is a change in either the demand for or the supply of a particular currency. So let's think of two things that can change the demand for euros in Switzerland. For example, what if Swiss household incomes were to rise and therefore they would begin demanding more imports from European countries? In order to buy more imported goods, Swiss households would demand more euros. So the demand for euros would increase and therefore the exchange rate of the euro would increase to perhaps 1.4 francs per euro. Now, as we can see, as the exchange rate rises, the quantity supplied of euros increases. The rationale for this is that at higher exchange rates, European households would be willing to supply a greater quantity of their currency to Swiss households. This is because when the euro is worth more francs, 1.4 francs instead of 1.2 francs, European households would find Swiss goods and services and assets more attractive. Therefore, there would be an inflow of Euro European currency, the euro, into Switzerland, allowing Swiss ho households to acquire the greater quantity of euros that they demand due to their higher incomes. One other factor that could increase the demand for euros in Switzerland might be an increase in interest rates in European countries. This wouldn't lead to a greater demand for European goods, rather it would lead to a greater demand for assets in European countries for which Swiss households would require a greater quantity of euros. Higher interest rates in European countries can cause the demand for euros to rise as Swiss households would wish to save their money in European assets as opposed to Swiss assets. Let's go ahead and identify a couple of other factors that can cause the demand for euros to increase. What if inflation in Switzerland were higher than it was in neighboring European countries? If the price level of goods and services in Switzerland were to rise, whereas those in other European countries are remaining steady, Swiss households would be expected to demand more European goods since they appear relatively cheaper. Therefore, higher inflation rates in Switzerland can cause demand for euros to increase. 
Additionally, if there were speculation among Swiss investors that the value of the euro was going to increase, there would logically be an increase in demand for euros now, which would ultimately cause the value of the euro to increase relative to the Swiss franc. Any of these factors, the demand for European goods and services, the demand for European assets, or the expectation of future increases in the value of the euro can cause the current demand for euros to rise and therefore cause the euro to appreciate against the Swiss franc. Next let's talk about some factors that can cause the supply of euros to change in Switzerland. As we said before, the supply of euros represents individuals in Europe who buy Swiss goods, Swiss services, and Swiss assets for which they must supply euros to the Swiss foreign exchange market. If anything changes that causes an inflow of foreign investment into Switzerland or uh, an increase in demand for Swiss goods from European households, any of these things can cause the supply of euros to change and shift outwards. An increase in the supply of euros in Switzerland due to an increase in demand for Swiss goods would cause the exchange rate of the euro to fall from 1.2 francs to perhaps 1 franc. Now the value of euros is lower, we say that the euro has depreciated to Swiss households and as a result European goods will begin to appear more affordable, therefore more attractive to Swiss households, so at the lower exchange rate Swiss households will demand a greater quantity of euros than they would at the higher exchange rate. Anything that increases in the supply of euros in Switzerland will cause the euro to depreciate or grow weaker against the Swiss franc. For example, if Switzerland had higher interest rates, then European households and investors would want to start saving their money in Swiss franc assets. Therefore, they would supply more euros and demand more francs in the market for francs in Europe. On the other hand, if uh, prices in Switzerland, if the inflation rate were lower than it were in Europe, then Europeans would begin supplying more euros in order to buy more Swiss goods which appear relatively cheaper. Additionally, if incomes in Europe were rising more rapidly than they were in Switzerland, then European consumers, European households, would supply more euros in order to buy more and more Swiss imports in European countries. Any of these factors would cause the supply of euros to increase in Switzerland and the value or the exchange rate of the euro to fall relative to the Swiss franc. Next we'll look at the market for Swiss francs in Europe and compare the exchange rate for Swiss francs to the exchange rate for euros and see how the two exchange rates are, are related. In the new graph on the right, we see the market for Swiss francs in Europe. Let's make a few observations about this graph before we do analysis on what could cause a change in the exchange rate for Swiss francs in Europe. Notice that the supply curve in this market is red, just like the demand curve for the market in the market for euros is red. The reason both lines are red is that they both represent Swiss households. Whereas Swiss households, Swiss individuals, demand euros, they are the suppliers of Swiss francs in European countries. In order to buy European goods, Swiss individuals must supply Swiss francs to the European foreign exchange market. The demand curve in the market for Swiss francs in Europe is blue because it represents the same individuals as the supply in the market for euros in Switzerland, which is also blue. European households, European individuals, demand Swiss francs. Therefore, the demand for Swiss francs comes from European individuals who want francs in order to buy Swiss goods. Next, let's look at the exchange rate for Swiss francs in Europe. Notice that the value of the Swiss franc, is, Swiss franc is expressed in terms of euros. The exchange rate is the euro value of francs, therefore we label it as euros over francs. In this case we see that the value of a Swiss franc is only 0.83 euro cents or 83 euro cents. 0.83 euros I should say. This is the inverse, you will notice, of the exchange rate of the mar in the market for euros. In other words, 0 0.83 equals 1 over 1.2. This is clearly logical. If 1 euro costs 1 franc and 20 cents, then 1 franc costs 1 over 120, which is 83 cents. Anything that causes an increase in the demand for euros in Switzerland will cause an increase in the supply of francs in Europe. This is also very logical because if Swiss households wish to buy more European goods, they A, demand more euros, and B, must supply more Swiss francs to, Europe, to the European market. Therefore, anything that causes an appreciation of the euro 
to 1.4, let's say, will cause a depreciation or a decrease in the value of the franc. The new exchange rate for the Swiss franc, if the value of the euro is now 1.4 francs, will simply be 1 over 1.4, which equals 0 0.71. So an appreciation of the euro caused by an increase in the demand for euros results in a depreciation of the Swiss franc caused by an increase in the supply of Swiss franc in Europe. Notice that the red curve in the market on the left shifts out, causing an outward shift in the red curve on the market on the right. One currency gets stronger, the euro in this case, while the other currency gets weaker, the franc. So as we saw, an increase in the demand for euros causes the exchange rate of the euro to appreciate in terms of francs, and the exchange rate for the franc to depreciate in terms of euros. An increase in demand for euros corresponds with an increase in supply of francs. It would therefore hold that an increase in the demand for francs would correspond with an increase in the supply of euros. So let's consider what happens when Europeans demand more Swiss francs. Of course, an increase in demand for Swiss francs could be the result of several factors. Perhaps European incomes are rising, therefore Europeans demand more Swiss imported goods. Perhaps interest rates in Switzerland are rising, therefore Europeans wish to save more money in Swiss assets. Um, perhaps inflation in Europe has risen, therefore Swiss goods just appear more attractive because they're relatively cheaper. Any of these things can cause demand for francs to rise in Europe. Now, as, in order to buy more Swiss goods or save money in Swiss banks or acquire more Swiss assets, Europeans must demand more francs and therefore they must supply more euros. So the outward shift in the demand for francs corresponds with an outward shift in the supply of euros. Both blue lines have shifted now. The increase in supply of euros causes the value of the euro in terms of Swiss francs to fall, whereas the increase in demand for Swiss francs causes the value of the franc in terms of euros to rise. So let's assume that the increase in the demand for francs causes the franc to appreciate from 0.83 euros to 1 euro. This would correspond with clearly a D appreciation in the market for euros from 1.2 francs per euro to 1 franc per euro. So now we've seen that any time the demand for a particular currency changes, the supply of the other currency will change in the same direction. In this case, demand for francs has risen, causing the supply of euros to increase. In the market for Swiss francs in Europe, the franc appreciates or gets stronger. In the market for euros in Switzerland, the euro depreciates or gets weaker. In this lesson, we have talked about how an exchange rate is determined, how to label an exchange rate diagram, and we've gone over some of the factors that can affect demand and supply for currencies and therefore how exchange rates can be affected following shifts in demand and supply for currencies. We've also explained that the supply of a particular currency in one country comes from individuals in other countries who are demanding the home country's currency, whereas the demand for a country's currency comes from consumers, households, and investors within that country who demand foreign currencies in order to buy goods, services, or assets abroad.